I'm Shannon Sked. I'm an entomologist with Western Pest Services. I actually manage our innovations and continuous improvement programs as well. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about entomology, what it is, and maybe some careers in entomology that you might not have known about. The first thing that we always got to talk about when we talk about entomology is what is entomology? Well, it's actually the science of studying insects. And insects are very specific type of animals. They have certain features that I'm gonna go over with you here so that you know the difference between an insect and all the other animals in the world. So the first thing that we always look for is the total number of body parts on these small critters. In the case of insects, they have three body parts, a head, a middle part called the thorax, and the rear end called the abdomen. So if they have three body regions, we're going in the right direction. The second thing is they'll have six total legs or three pairs. If they have four pairs, it could be a spider, it could be a tick. But if they have three pairs with three body regions, we're still going in the right direction. They also have these antennae, these antennae that bounce around so that they can actually smell and feel everything around them. That's actually really important as well. If they don't have antennae, they could be something closely related to an insect, but they wouldn't be an insect. And then finally, they would have two pairs of wings. This gets a little tricky because there's some insects like bed bugs that have no wings at all. There's other insects like the house fly that have only one pair of wings. But generally speaking, the vast majority of about eight to 10 million species of insects that are out there, almost all of them have two pairs of wings. So if we have three body regions in yellow, if we have three pairs of legs in red, one pair of antenna, no more than one pair though, in green shown here, and if we have two pairs of wings, then we have an insect. And if you have all those features together and you have an insect, that's what somebody like myself would study. There's a lot of different things that entomologists do. And I'm gonna go over a little bit about my background and some of the things that I've done as an entomologist. I started my career as an entomologist doing research in agriculture. So it was about food production, and it was food production in farming systems. This was my lab. It was a big field of soybean or corn. I worked with row crops. I looked for things called beneficial insects. So these are insects that eat insects that cause a lot of damage. And I specialized in population dynamics and epidemiology. I also specialized in what we call toxicology, which is how the chemicals actually work, and they might actually harm the beneficial insects and get rid of the bad insects. So we have a lot of different types of beneficial insects. This one here is a ladybug. I think most of you probably can recognize a ladybug. It's sitting right here on a soybean leaf. And that beneficial insect, this one in particular, it doesn't have a real famous common name. It's called Harmonia. And there's other ones that are native, things like Colea magella, lots of fancy names that are out there. Uh, this one here is actually a really important one because they actually feed on aphids that cause a lot of damage on soybeans and they can actually reduce the amount of food that farmers can produce. This was my other Petri dish. This was a cornfield. And so I spent a lot of time in cornfield and I was looking for a very specific type of pest that it causes about $2.2 billion of damage in the corn industry every single year. It's called the European corn borer. The other pests that I dealt with are things like seed corn maggot, root, wor root worm, and a bunch of other ones. And then I would go out and I would monitor and I would look for when they occurred and when some of the beneficial insects that ate those bad guys would occur as well. This one in particular was one that I was really concentrated on. This one doesn't have a common name. It's a little wasp called Macrocentris grandii. And this little tiny wasp actually helps to control the European corn borer by laying her eggs inside of the corn borer's caterpillar body. Ultimately, it will kill the caterpillar. It sounds kind of gory, but it's really important when you consider how much corn that European corn borer can destroy. After I finished most of my research, I went on to become a Navy entomologist, and I got to do a lot of fun stuff doing that. My main functions were making sure that pesticides that were used on Navy installations around the world were safe and they weren't gonna harm our sailors and Marines that were on those bases. I also focused on things like agricultural outleases. I looked at things like big gigantic termite mounds in tropical areas like Puerto Rico. This is a picture of an agricultural outlease. You can see all that land that's around that airstrip, which is a Navy airstrip, that's all owned by the Navy. 
Well, all the farming systems that's done in those agricultural alleases, they have to be managed as well. And I was part of, of writing the plants that would manage those. I got to see some really incredible places like in the Persian Gulf in Bahrain. We did a lot of horticultural contracting. So these were managing pests that could destroy these beautiful landscapes that were on the Navy bases. We wanted to make sure that these Navy bases were good places for the sailors and the Marines to enjoy. Uh, it's part of, part of moral and welfare, we called it. And then I started really focusing in on a particular group of insects called stored product insects. So the Navy transports a lot of materials all around the world to support its missions overseas and here back in the United States. With that transport, we can accidentally move different types of pest insects around the world with it. So things like you could see the little saw, uh, the, the wood, wood saw that's down on the bottom of this pallet, that's all created by a really important pest called the powder post beetle. We have the powder post beetle here in the United States, but in Europe it's considered invasive. So we would have to manage it and anything that we brought overseas over to Germany or elsewhere, we would have to make sure that we weren't accidentally bringing powder post beetle in with it. And we get to write these incredible documents like the, the one that I wrote for the Armed Forces Pest Management Board, the Technical Guide 27, that was actually how do you inspect for all of these different pests. Lastly, and probably most importantly, I got to see parts of the world that otherwise I would have never been able to see and make memories that I never would have been able to make otherwise. So here's a picture of uh, the, the old boats that were used by um, uh, the Persians back in, in the Persian Gulf way, way back when. I got to visit the, the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. And, but ultimately, I had to settle into a career. So I'm here with you now as an entomologist for Western Pest Services, and that's called a structural entomologist or a pest control entomologist. And some of the things that I focus on are things like bed bugs. And I work with uh, a, a team of dogs, actually. Here's a picture of a bunch of them. Um, now, these don't have six legs. They have four. They have no wings, and they have really complicated body parts, not just three sections. So they're not insects. These are actually canines. But we work with them because they go around and they smell for bed bugs. So uh, writing a program on how we train these dogs and how we work with the technicians and the canine handlers on trying to identify where bed bugs may be, trying to keep people protected and, and hotels from being able to have these things. And then there's also still some of this import export that I get to do, uh, specifically with the cocoa industry. So this is actually cocoa pods on a cocoa tree. Uh, probably somewhere in Ivory Coast, Africa, or somewhere else. And the beans that are pulled out of those pods, shown here, actually get transported over to the United States. So they get brought to these ports of origin where they're inspected and bagged and they're checked for different types of pests. They get loaded onto a truck. That truck puts them onto containers that goes onto a ship. The ship goes across the sea, brings them back to the United States, goes onto another truck. And finally, they end up in warehouses prior to going to places where the manufacturers will actually make them into the good food that you like to eat. Because ultimately, they're going to become these things right here. And all throughout that process, we have to make sure that there's no pests that are damaging them. And then when there's a bunch of different pests that, just like the powder post beetles, is an invasive species in Europe, there's pests that we don't have in the United States that we want to make sure that we keep out. So things like the copper beetle that's pictured here on the bottom right, or the screw worm, or the uh, 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 dermestid beetle, red flower beetle, there is a ton of stored product pests that we want to make sure that we're, we're managing them if they're already here or we're preventing them from coming in on any of those ships that bring products and food in from overseas. There's a lot of other careers in entomology that I need to make you aware of too. So there's forensic entomologists. These work with police departments and detective agencies, and they try to solve crimes using insects that have very specific ways of feeding and, and doing things. There's forest entomologists to make sure that our trees and our forests are safe. There's urban entomologists like myself and some of the examples that I gave you with what I do. Uh, apiarists, which doesn't even have entomology in the word, but those are beekeepers. So those are people that actually produce honey and they do important work with pollinating a bunch of different crops like almonds, peaches, nectar, nectarines. So all the food that you like to eat, you can thank an apiarist for that. There's agricultural entomologists like Mark shown here where he's doing a sweep net in a soybean field. 
And then there's food protection entomology. So once the food actually gets to the food plant where it's gonna be processed, how do we make sure that that food stays safe at the same time? So the question I have for you is, what type of entomologist do you think you wanna be when you grow up? <laughs>